organic. Hello, dear viewers. It is me, Andrew Lapamardo, back again. And today, we are going to be talking about black goo pathogen mutation. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? The black liquid or chemical A0-3959X.91-15 was essentially a living and mutable organic compound created by the engineers to transform organisms into violent beasts. It is made up of millions of microscopic organisms that can act as both a life giver and a destroyer of life. The black liquid can fuse with other organisms' biochemical structures to change them on a molecular and genetic levels. It is believed that the engineers created the black liquid as a bioweapon and that the xenomorphs were an extension of this bioweapons program. Because of its extremely volatile and hostile nature, the engineers used to store the liquids in various steatite ampules. Naturally, there have been various creatures that were formed due to the exposure to the black liquid. Most of these have turned out to be aggressive and hostile in nature, which kill anything in sight. It is largely unknown when exactly the black liquid was created, but it is safe to assume that the engineers have been using it for thousands of years. Sometime a couple of millennia back, engineers came to LV-223 so that they could unleash the pathogen on Earth to wipe out the population. But before that could happen, the engineers themselves got exposed to the black liquid, and most of the engineers who planned to wipe out humans got destroyed themselves. Many years later, in 2093, USCSS Prometheus landed on LV-223 to find clues about the origin of humanity and the existence of the engineers. On LV-223, all of the Prometheus crew members died except Elizabeth Shaw and the synthetic David. The only engineer who had survived the exposure to the black liquid also died when he got impregnated by a trilobite, an event that led to the creation of Deacon. Shaw and David left on another ship for the engineer homeworld, and upon reaching the planet, he deployed ampules filled with the black liquid on the unfortunate engineers, who got petrified and died. At the same time, another organism became aggressively high-bred predators who attacked anything that moved. David invested several years into studying the black liquid and its effects on life form. He concluded that the chemical A0-3959X.91-15, or the black goo, or black liquid, essentially served as a bioweapon that had the capabilities of exterminating any and all fauna. Once exposed, the black liquid would go on to change the genetic makeup and rewrite the DNA of the infected organism, making the organism extremely aggressive and nearly mindless. For instance, Fifield, a crew member of US CSS Prometheus, became violent and strong after exposure to the liquid and died only after taking heavy damage from gunshots, flamethrowers, and being run down by an RT series group transport. Furthermore, the pathogen mutated several worm-like organisms in and around the engineer temple, turning them into hammerpeds. Like xenomorphs, these creatures had acidic blood and, in addition, they could regenerate severed body parts. Charlie Holloway had sex with his partner Elizabeth Shaw after getting exposed to the black liquid. The exposure not only mutated Holloway, but also altered the genes of Shaw, who got pregnant with a trilobite, despite the fact that she was barren. But since Shaw didn't experience any more mutations, it can be safely said that the black liquid only changed her reproductive system. We call them engineers. Engineers? Mind them. As we already know, the engineers are a race of highly advanced and ancient humanoid, with a height of about three meters and extremely intelligent. They are known to be the creators of many species, including the xenomorphs. It was the engineers who led to the creation of xenomorphs, as well as humans. But when humans started to grow into a race that paved the way for their own doom, the engineers wished to exterminate all humans. Can we really blame them, though? But that's a topic for another day. If we believe that the engineers created the xenomorphs as a bioweapon, a question that arises is against which organism did they design these weapons? For? A frequently asked and debated question is whether engineers created the xenomorphs to fight yauchas, because apart from this, there's hardly any sensible reason that would explain the creation of xenomorphs. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So, it is fairly possible that the engineers created the xenomorphs as a defense weapon against the Yauchin. Who? Hunted engineers. But when even that didn't help, the engineers resorted to living a peaceful life as a last resort to shield themselves from the wrath of Yauchas. Who didn't attack unarmed prey because of their code of honor. This is why the engineers were dressed in robes and wielded no arms, an alien covenant. It is quite a possibility that Yauchas started hunting humans in the first place because of their acute physical resemblance to the engineers. Let us now take a look at a few species resulting from the exposure to the black liquid. Grab your drinks and snacks, settle in, and let's get started. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, Please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Number one, Trilobite. In the 2012 movie Prometheus, a synthetic named David tricks Holloway into consuming the black liquid. Later, Holloway has sex with his partner Elizabeth Shaw. Although Holloway dies later, Shaw becomes pregnant with an alien creature despite the fact that she was sterile. Interestingly enough, the Trilobite that she gave birth to not only had an amniotic sac, but wait for it, also had an umbilical cord. From the moments of the Trilobite before being extracted, we can assume that it it would have worked as a belly buster if Shaw didn't perform a cesarean using the good old Pauling MedPod 720i. Nevertheless, the trilobite essentially worked as a face hugger. But unlike a face hugger that takes birth from an egg, the trilobite came out of a womb. It is largely unknown how exactly a sterile woman could conceive it, but it is a widely accepted fact that Holloway's sperm had its genetic structure altered, which in turn altered the reproductive system of Shaw. <laughs> Initially, the trilobite looked like a forearm squid and was extremely aggressive for its size, much like some of my ex-girlfriends. Shaw tried to kill the creature by trying to decontaminate the med pod, but it only fell unconscious. The creature soon developed into an enormous squid-like organism with several large and powerful tentacles, so much so that the tentacles could take down a fully grown engineer. It had two holes on its back, presumably for breathing, Unlike facehuggers, the trilobite didn't leap onto its host, but rather made them immobile by binding them with its tentacles. Once that was done, the trilobite impregnated the engineer with a deacon with its feeding tube that was placed inside a large mouth. The deacon was more humanoid than most xenomorphs and less mechanical. It had pale, blue, insipid skin, as if it were an organism that had been kept in formaldehyde solution for quite a long time. Once the impregnation was successful, the trilobite died, just like a facehugger. In contrast, however, the engineer also passed out, presumably from exhaustion, struggle, and lack of air to breathe. Although the trilobite was named after the long extinct arthropod, it doesn't share many physical resemblances with its namesake. Number two, Deacon. As we already discussed in our previous entry, the Deacon came into existence after the trilobite impregnated the last engineer. We wouldn't get into those details any further. However, it is important to learn about the Deacon's unique physiology. It had smooth bluish skin tone and texture with four fingers, a thumb, and plantigrade feet. That's as humanoid as an alien can probably get. Furthermore, its upper jaw had teeth similar to those found in herbivores, whereas the inner jaw had smaller, sharper, and fewer teeth. Interestingly, the lower jaw extended outwards and appeared as an extra set of gum. Unlike typical xenomorphs, the deacon lacked a tail and possessed a pointy head. Initially, the deacon seemed to be smaller than the engineer, but that could be because of infancy. With time, it would have outgrown the engineer himself. According to the comics, 126 years after the events of the film, i.e. in 2219, a vessel named Jerion reached LV-223 with its crew. The mission turned out to be catastrophic for most of the crew members, and only a few survived, including a mutant construct named Elden and a predator named Ahab. Elden, Ahab, and a few human survivors reached a mountain where they presumed was a home to a human beacon. In an attempt to safely leave LV-223, they started to drill into the mountain, but to their shock and surprise, they realized that the mountain itself was alive. Furthermore, they discovered acidic veins inside the huge structure. It is now that Elden assumed that the deacon 
had mutated heavily around the Wayland ship Prometheus and turned it into an organic mountain. So you can see that the Deacon is very different from Xenomorph. But the biggest difference? lies in the host that they come from, and the way in which the Deacon was born. While most xenomorphs born out of humans lack limbs, the Deacon had its limbs intact at birth. We have known xenomorph chest bursters to break the ribs of their host when they burst out of the chest cavity, but the Deacon used the pointy end of its head to come out of the engineer. The creature looks nothing short of an elegant white shark in the dark waters of the Arctic. Number 3. Mutated Human, Sean Fifield Fifield was part of the crew of Prometheus. While exploring the Engineer Temple, an impending storm forced the crew to return to Prometheus. But Milburn and Fifield got lost inside the artificial structure and were forced to spend the night there until the time the crew didn't rescue them. The both of them soon discovered hammipedes, alien worms from LV-223. One of the hammipedes latched onto Milburn when he tried to touch it. Meanwhile, when Fifield attempted to remove the creature, it fastened its grip and broke Milburn's arm. In a desperate attempt to save Milburn, Fifield severed the creature's head, but the acidic blood melted the visor of Fifield's helmet. The creature's head regenerated and it entered Milburn's mouth via his suit. To make things worse, the room's floor got filled with black liquid. It touched Fifield and mutated him into a grotesque creature as his face melded painfully. When the rest of the crew finally left to find Fifield and Milburn, many crew members were slaughtered by a mutated Fifield. Furthermore, his transformation made him fairly strong and resilient. He was able to withstand several shots to the head, but succumbed when they incinerated him by using a flamethrower, shot him with a shotgun, and ran him over by using an RT series group transport. I don't really have anything to contribute in the gigantic dead body arena! I want to go back to the ship. I'm sure they'd love that for their advertisements. Before joining the crew of Prometheus, Fifield had served on several missions, and it clearly took a toll on him. He became pretty unstable and hostile as a person. Although he appeared to be a vibrant person, which can be judged by looking at his Hawaiian attire, the red mohawk, etc., he seemed to act like the tough guy of the crew. But at the same time, he displayed quite a few qualities that made him seem like a coward. For instance, his reaction upon seeing the engineer's corpse. <sighs> Number four, mutated worms, Hammerpede. The Hammerpede was a worm-like creature found on LV-223. It had pale whitish gray skin that appeared somewhat translucent, similar to a Neomorph and even the Deacon. They probably are mutated forms of indigenous worms found on the moon. They could grow up to four feet in length and had crests that resembled the hood of a cobra. These crests could be folded inward or outward around the Hammerpede's mouth. As seen in the previous entry, they were incredibly strong for their size and girth. It could easily break Milburn's arm. Furthermore, like Xenomorphs, the Hammerpede possessed acidic blood and could regenerate. Although regeneration is an ability that is found on several earthly worms, the process is not as hasty as we witnessed in the case of the Hammerpede. Hey, oh, uh, uh, the exact reason behind the Hammerpede's aggressive nature is largely unknown, but it is believed that the black liquid generated the worms. As we already know, the black liquid generates and regenerates life, and these life forms grow from simple to more complex organisms through a series of stages. One of the deleted scenes from the Blu-ray version of Prometheus shows that the crew of Prometheus discover small worms that later go on to develop into hammerpedes. But this doesn't yet allay the doubts regarding their origin. It remains quite possible that the engineers brought the hammerpedes with them so that the organism could serve as lab test animals. Interestingly enough, the hammerhead worms, or bipalliums, found on Earth can also regenerate heads and bodies when cut in half. Each half develops into a new worm altogether, but the process takes quite a bit of time. Number 5. Elden As mentioned earlier, Elden belonged to the crew that was sent to LV-223 126 years after the events of the film Prometheus. He was a construct or a synthetic that was more advanced than the contemporary synthetics, and also possessed a more organic body, 
full of muscles and tissues. On LV-223, the astrobiologist, Francis Lane, injected Eldon with the black liquid, after which he began to mutate violently. Francis was suffering from cancer, and he wished to use Eldon as a test subject to see if the black liquid could cure his cancer. Although quite organic in nature, Eldon was essentially a machine. After his exposure to the black liquid, it seemed that his body lost most of his cutaneous material. Reddish and white tones covered his body, and he developed two tubular tendrils that protruded from his back. And these tendrils would later mutate further to take the shape of an extra set of arms. The mutation made him powerful enough to take on several predators and xenomorphs simultaneously. And he could even withstand shots from plasma casters without an ounce of pain. The parts that got damaged during the attack would regenerate within seconds, revealing his enhanced regenerative capabilities. Furthermore, his body could morph as per his will. For instance, while fighting a group of predators, Eldon transformed his stomach to develop into jaws with razor sharp teeth. Yeah, we're gonna all need a figure of that. NECA, this is right up your alley. When he bit one of the predators with the deadly maw, the predator himself began to mutate. So it seems that Eldon was not just infected by the black liquid but he became a carrier of the infection too. Furthermore, vegetation began to grow on whichever surface he touched. It seems that he also has some degree of control over xenomorphs, and he somewhat reflected the skeletal visage of a xenomorph. As a synthetic construct, Eldon was helpful and more trustful than necessary. It was his nature of trusting people that made Francis inject him with the black liquid, which in turn unfolded the disastrous turn of events. He became increasingly violent after the infection and went on a rampage. However, in the end, Eldon merged with the organic mountain, which was believed to be a highly mutated deacon. Number six, mutated Yaucha. He was a typical Yaucha who got bitten by a mutated Elden. The Yaucha subsequently underwent several violent mutations that left him vaguely looking like his kind. The indirect exposure to the black liquid caused his height to increase to that of the upgrade predator, who was taller than most typical Yauchas. Furthermore, his eyes turned pitch black, which was similar to the engineers or the mutated form of Eldon. Additionally, he grew an extra pair of arms that came out of his left shoulder. The mutation gave him increased strength, even by predator standards. He could now punch his way into a bio helmet and break it into half. Instead of the typical four mandibles, he possessed 10 of them and they could bite into the strong Yaucha skull with relative ease. The only drawback of his mutation seemed to be his troubled breathing. Before his mutation, the Yaucha used to be an accomplished hunter and belonged to the clan of a famous predator named Ahab. These predators were already on a hunting trip on a nearby planet, but when they learnt of Eldon and his massacre, they probably assumed that he would be a worthy prey. And naturally, they came to LV-223 to take down the mutated Eldon. After encountering Eldon, the Yaucha, along with his clanmates, attacked Eldon. However, when the Yaucha charged at Eldon from behind, Eldon grew large jaws in his abdomen and bit the Yaucha, who recoiled in excruciating pain while the others fought Eldon. By the end, only one Yaucha remained, and instead of continuing the fight, he offered Eldon the title and mark of a warrior, but Eldon was not interested. Meanwhile, the Yaucha bitten by Eldon began to mutate in a grotesque fashion. After the mutation was complete, the mutated Yaucha attacked one of his own, so far as biting the other predator's face and killing him in the process. After this, the mutated Yaucha even ate the corpse of his fallen brethren, revealing that he had developed cannibalistic tendencies. But he was soon surrounded by xenomorphs, whom he dealt with relative ease. In the end, the mutated Yaucha attacked Francis Lane, who himself had undergone several mutations by now. In the end, Eldon came to Francis's rescue, and together they managed to end the mutated Yaucha's rampage. They were giants. At least statues of giants. Number seven, mutated engineer. David had explained in Alien Covenant that the black liquid was designed to infect all fauna. It took several different forms and infected organisms in different ways. On a closer look, one may find at least four functions of the pathogen in the films Prometheus and Covenant. While some believe that these are four different effects of the black liquid, some are of the opinion that the engineers created four different kinds of black liquid. These would be the creation form, the destructive form, the parasitic form, and the mutated form. In the 
the prologue of Prometheus, an engineer drank the black liquid and immediately started to disintegrate. Whatever remains of his disintegrated body began to cascade in the water. This hastened the evolutionary process on Earth as his DNA triggered a biogenetic reaction. <sighs> The engineer probably consumed the creation form of the liquid and seeded the world to produce new forms of fauna, almost as if the engineers were gardeners of entire world. The destructive form was also witnessed in Prometheus. It had the capacity of exploding the head of an engineer. This form of black liquid was to be used to destroy humankind from the face of the earth. And it was probably this very form that David had dropped on the engineer homeworld in the film Covenant. It served as a bioweapon and seemed to break down and destroy tissue, killing the infected immediately. The tissues then erupted into tendrils and turned into yet another transmuted form of the black liquid. The parasitic form of the black liquid causes others not only to mutate grotesquely, but also leads to the development of other organisms like trilobites and deacon. Lastly, the mutation form of the black liquid completely transforms an individual organism into an aggressive and violent creature that attacks anyone in sight. Two prominent examples of this kind of infection were Fifield and the Hammerpedes. Next up is a short one. Number eight, mutated fish. The second issue of Prometheus Fire and Stone portrayed a bunch of mutated fish, possibly a result of exposure to the black liquid. The fishes had grown extremely large in size, some resembling that of great white shark. But the most interesting feature about these creatures was the two sets of jaws with razor sharp teeth. Just as one of the crew members tripped and fell into the water, they got attacked by these mutated fish. Are they alive? Number nine, mutated plant life. When David released the black liquid over the engineer's homeworld in the film Covenant, he killed the entire engineer populace. But the pathogen didn't just infect the non-botanical life forms or fauna. It also mutated the floral of the planet. These mutated plants or fungi developed at various locations on the planet. And the first two victims of the film Covenant stepped on these egg sacs that burst to generate airborne moat that infected those who disturbed the egg sacs. They were almost the size of eggs of a bird and were able to sense the proximity of nearby hosts. When someone was in close vicinity, they would spew clouds of microscopic moats into the air. Interestingly, these moats were the first stage in the gestation of a bloodburster and the creation of neomorphs. <laughs> to sum it up, it can be said well beyond an ounce of doubt that all creatures found in the alien films, games, and literature are fierce beasts. Although the franchise doesn't necessarily fare well in terms of continuity, the beasts have become memorable and will continue to remain so for a few centuries from today. Well, dear viewers, this is the end of our video. I hope you all had a wonderful time and learned a few things because I know I did. Remember, if you aren't subscribed to our channel, please go and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when new videos are released. With all that being said, farewell, folks.